They're standing at the Longhorn at center court. Maya Forsberg puts up the basketball and controlling the opening possession are the Texas Longhorns with a 31 win season, the Big 12 tournament champions. Madison Booker, a big reason why the second team All-American going right to the hoop and in. Just no resistance at all. The first ball screen in the middle of the floor. Alabama with drop coverage. They don't get in front of the ball. They'll impact the ball. Booker reads it well. Leah Nye and company coming out of the Southeastern Conference. Sarah Ashley Barker along with Nye. A couple of leaders for the Crimson Tide. That one well off the mark for Nye, who is typically a sharpshooter for Bama. Back the other way quickly. And Madison Booker looks around, has space up down the mid range. Tiffany, you've got to get matched up. A bad match is better than no match. Lack of communication by Alabama in transition defense. Big 12. Co-player of the year as well as freshman of the year is Madison Booker. Royal McQueen, the senior out of Florence, South Carolina, running the point position. This Alabama group looked inside yesterday. Essence Cody, too strong. The energy inside this Moody Center is vibrant to start off this ball game. And here it passed out of bounds and turn over. But how about Madison Booker getting the Longhorns going? Yeah, Big 12 Player of the Year, the first freshman in Big 12 history to win that award. And her pace of the game, her feel, her understanding for a kid that was recruited as a small forward, thrust into that point guard spot with an injury to Rory Harmon. And man, has she handled it with a lot of poise, a lot of humility. 35 in white is a handful. We're back the other way for Alabama. They're down a starting guard in Jessica Timmins, who they lost to a torn ACL in the SEC tournament. Turnaround jumper rims off for Aaliyah Nye. But you talk about the absence of Rory Harmon since she tore her ACL back on December 27th. Madison Booker running the point forward essentially and says, hey, look, I like to facilitate. I like to pass the basketball. Step back three. Rolls off. But the question mark of whether they could be the Big 12 champions, many question that when Harmon went down, the Longhorns have since answered. Wow. Parker back the other way, that left hand right at Taylor yeah, Jones. She is an absolute bully driving the ball in the right way. And Barker seldom has back-to-back -back bad performances, was a non-factor in their opening round win against Florida State. With Shaley Gonzalez inside to Aaliyah Moore, who's tangled up and foul goes down hard, and she'll shoot a couple. Well, Vic Schaefer, in his fourth season at the helm here in Texas, the Austin native, trying to take this team back to the Sweet 16 for the third time in the last four seasons. Remember, they had back-to-back -back runs in the Elite Eight back in 21 and 22, and this group, he feels like, he said, how are you gonna handle the pressure? Yep. As the number one seed, there's a target on your back, many are looking at you. They came out, had a good practice yesterday, and seemingly a strong start. Well, the value of being a number one seed, we talked about it on Friday, 31 of the past 41 national champions have come from that one seed line. And Vic Schaefer knows he's got a fabulous opportunity in front of here this evening to advance the Sweet 16. The crowd is into it, the size advantage, everything shapes up for Texas, but you've got to finish this deal against a very fast Alabama team that has actually been sped up by the pressure defense early. A turnover through the hands of Gianna Cunningham, who checks into the ball game with Essence Cody, who picked up that foul. So they have to watch the foul trouble of the freshman who is foul prone a lot. And that's going to be a key piece. Gianna Cunningham's got to step up inside. Number 13 in Crimson. That's where they go with the basketball to Taylor Jones. Defended by Cunningham. Good defense, hand straight up. And nine seconds left on the shot clock. It's gonna be Texas basketball. Well, Christy Curry, more than 500 career wins. And the job that she's done with this Alabama Crimson Tide team, Vic Schaefer said, hey, we've known each other for a long time. And when you think of winning and the success at Alabama, you think of Christy Curry. Yeah, well, she's one of 10 in the women's basketball game. There are 100 plus wins at three different schools. She did that Purdue, Texas Tech, and Alabama. She is all about the right things. And the shot clock is, right? Indeed, that one heaved up well short 
and a violation of the shot clock for Texas. Now, can Alabama settle in offensively? Their ball screen offense is what has advanced them to this second round game against Texas. Set a ball screen, get those guards going downhill, knock that pressure off of Texas on this possession and get yourself going. Stolen away by Shea Holly. Holly, who was scoreless in that first round game but had a career high four block, she impacts the game in so many ways. Yeah, Bama tried to burn the pressure off with a back cut, but just absolutely wasn't there. Moore has taken a lot of contact underneath the basket, fouled once again. And Aaliyah Moore, the junior, will go to the free throw line. And how about one of the greats who wore 35 and burnt orange? It's actually retired on the men's side. Kevin Durant went to come check out Maddie Booker to see if she could get cooking. Obviously, he cares about Texas basketball, and he's in town. Got a doubleheader in uh, San Antonio. Yeah, that's that's back to back nights. Yeah, I played at San Antonio last night again tomorrow night. One of the Kevin Durant, one of the all time top 10 players in the history of the game. And I had the luxury to cover him when he was coming out of high school at the Jordan Brand Classic in New York. Kevin Durant loves basketball more than anyone I've ever been around. Mm -hmm. Loves to compete, loves to play it, and loves the Longhorns. And he's sitting behind the Texas Longhorns bench as Carly Weathers buries the three. Tiffany, you've got to find some of those backside bombs against Texas. Burn that pressure off. Attack it off the bounce. And when Texas recovers that basketball, I mean, you've got to knock down those open looks. Into the hands of S.A. Barker. Nye decides to pull it out. And Madison Booker, who can affect so much because of that 6-1 frame, the steal here in transition. Left hand finish. Great control. Not good. Great control of her body for a true freshman. You would never guess this is the first year on the college level just watching her play. Wise beyond her years, the freshman out of Ridgeland, Mississippi. The inside to Cunningham being pushed back a little bit. Face up, jumper won't go. She fell back, therefore the shot was short. Here's Shea Holly, too strong. Loyal McQueen doesn't have numbers coming up the left side. Decides to take anyway of Gonzalez forcing the issue. What a tough finish by McQueen. Because she actually had numbers on the back side of the play coming in transition just right into the chest of that Texas defender. And that's the strength of Alabama. Their guards can make plays getting downhill, half court, or in the open floor. More with time looking. Booker, who has six of the eight points for Texas in the early going. Some contact there, but nothing called as it's been a fun start here from the Moody Center in Austin. Let's check out how Alabama and Texas are fueling the run, brought to you by Wendy's. It's been 26 years since Alabama saw themselves in the Sweet 16, trying to get back there for the first time since 1998. Meanwhile, it's been more frequent and more recent for Texas, trying to get there for the third time in the last four years, seeking their 18th overall. Yeah, Texas is a proud, proud program. This is where they expect to be every year in the women's championship. You consider that Texas and Oklahoma both joining the SEC next year. Man, what a powerful dominant league waiting to happen. Speaking of power and dominance, that is exactly what Taylor Jones is as he's 6'4 post player. First two points of the game for the senior out of the Dallas area. The kick over to Nye in the corner. Has a program record for threes. Can't knock that one down. Jones goes down to the floor hard, holding the back of her head around. And she's got a twin sister named Tori. Another sister, Carly, that also played ball. That's a basketball family. So Deanna Gaston checks in for her, number five in white, the Big 12 Player of the Year this season. Booker picks up her dribble, looking for somewhere to go. Shaylee Gonzalez over to Shea Holly. And Holly saw it halfway down, a stick back off the old board for more. That's the problem in Texas, getting 42% but their misses on the year on the offensive glass. Alabama's probably not going to win the rebounding battle. They can't get pumped. They got to keep it close in this game. And an offensive foul called against Sarah Ashley Barker. Yeah, Texas is going to send four physical athletes to that offensive glass the majority of the time. 
And if you don't get in front and box off with force, they will make you pay. A lot of size, a lot of length, a lot of tenacity you're dealing with with that Texas front line. Well, as Jones continues to get tended to on the bench, Christy Curry says we have to keep the rebounding margin close at least. Texas had 26 offensive rebounds in that opening round win over Drexel. And now Alabama goes to a zone, and there's no reason to get overstretched right now. Don't react to the three-point ability of Texas. They only make four per game. Inside, that's where they score the majority of their points. Nearly 50% of their offense comes from paint points. Just powered right through that Alabama interior defense, knocking bodies out of the way. A real concern for Alabama early. Can they hold their own on the inside part of this game? So far, they have not. And another post player. This is where Alabama is thin. Gianna Cunningham picking up the personal foul. Tiffany, it's the pressure again by Texas. It's relentless on the ball. It will speed you up as a ball handler. It will speed you up as a screener. Alabama's got to settle in offensively in this game. Swing it around. Texas is scoring on 50% made buckets from the floor thus far. And again, having the success inside Aaliyah Moore now with six points to tie Maddie Booker. Skip pass across to Shaley Gonzalez. Gonzalez comes in a little bit closer. Moore grabbing up and getting that rebound. She's got four today. Great pass. Couldn't finish Holly, but she'll go to the free throw line. The first shot defense for Alabama is okay. The second shot defense is non-existent. And you get an athlete cutting out of the corner like Shea Holly. And watch 10 in white on the left side. That's a violent, good scoring cut by Holly. One of the better athletes in the Big 12. Was an all-state track runner in high school. Her dad played football here, a local legend but a tremendous athlete that has become an all Big 12 defensive performer this year. And I love too about her the fact that she's found a way to impact the ball game despite being held scoreless yesterday. Add to that the student athlete part graduated in three years from the business school. Well for the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA championships. As the final four will get underway in Cleveland starting April 5th. Alabama, baseline drive as Cody checks back in the ball game and gets her first points of the game. Yeah, you don't fight pressure with pressure. You got to blow by it. And a good job by Weathers not to settle for a three in the corner. Made a play off the bounce. And Essence Cody has terrific hands for a young kid. Seldom fumbles passes. And contest there, holding their hands up high, but Booker just too tough, elevates and drops it. I just look at that pull-up ability of her and Juju Watkins from Southern Cal for true freshman. Complete command over their body off the bounce into their jump shot. Special stuff. And two freshmen with number one C's in this tournament. Helping to lead the way for their team, Sarah Ashley Barker. Got with nowhere to go. Tiffany, she got to shoot it. She came off a ball screen wide open. Gonzalez running, finds Gaston, doesn't finish around the rim. For all the things that Texas has done right thus far, one of the conversations we had with Coach Schaefer was the ability to finish around the rim. That's going to be key for them not only tonight, but moving forward. Yeah, I mean, we asked him, where can you get better within this tournament? And the best ones do. It's the bigs finishing at a higher rate, and their ball screen defense has to go another notch. Stolen on the inbound, Parker finishing it off the other way. Live ball turnovers will help keep Alabama in this game. 17-11 advantage for the number one seed, Texas in Regional Four. The winner of this one will advance to the Sweet 16 to face either Gonzaga or Utah. Tiffany, I like the zone look for Alabama in this game. The problem is, can they clean up the miss? All five have to get involved and get engaged on the fight. The guards have to rotate down. And it's got to be a physical box off against Texas, not a jumping contest. And you can't leave Shaley Gonzalez Again. open. The offensive rebound from Gaston. And that was one thing that Christy Curry had to do in that game against Florida State Friday was play a little bit more zone than yep. she would have liked. She has always had it in her back pocket. 
And in this game, I think you're going to see maybe 50% of the defense from Alabama will be in the zone. Parker into the corner. Nine. Good oh, look. That's big Deep time. Corner, that, it through. Timmy, that is a big time drive by Parker to get downhill, not with the idea to score, but to find that backside bomb and make Texas pay for over helping to the ball. Three-second violation against the Texas Longhorns, but again, driving deep and kicking. Yeah, S.A. Barker is a downhill, driving, find others kid. And Nye, school record 106 made threes. You cannot let her get loose if you're Texas. Great awareness of where she is the entire game is a must. Second in the SEC and three-point percentage behind South Carolina's Tahina Pow Pow. Nye averages three threes a game. S.A. Barker looking for her game early. Essence Cody got a hand on it. Shaley Gonzalez comes up with it for Texas along the right side. And they'll look to hold for the final shot of the first quarter. Yeah, if you're Alabama, you've got to know that Texas is going to take this shot in enough time to get an offensive rebound. You've got to check out if you're the team in red. Good idea. Bounce pass just through the hands of Hattie Fye. And 2.5 seconds left for Alabama. Chance to get a shot off. Loyal McQueen, half court shot. Won't go down. An entertaining first 10 minutes here from Austin between Texas and Alabama. Sightings of 35 in a Texas uniform go back to the past. Kevin Durant changed the game, the National Player of the Year. One season here in Texas, 2006 to 2007. And then the present day, 35 in a Longhorn uniform. And it's Maddie Booker, the All-American who is wild, part of this fantastic freshman class. And when you compare the numbers between Maddie Booker and Kevin Durant, Maddie Booker holds her own. <laughs> well, that's why she chose number 35. And she's the subject of tonight's Need to Know, brought to you by Dick Sporting Goods. Think about Kevin Durant, Tiffany, the first freshman ever to win the Naismith National Player of the Year, went on to be the number two pick in the NBA draft after his freshman year. Greg Oden was taken number one and just continued to battle injuries. And Kevin Durant has risen to be one of the top ten players to ever play the game. And again, I was around him for three days in New York City for the Jordan Brand Classic when he was coming out of high school. He was only 6'9 at the time. But I remember the coaches telling me, that this kid, after every practice, wants to stay and play one-on-one, -on -one, play five-on-five. Five. He has played thousands and thousands of pickup games in the summer, just walking in gyms and getting the game going. A guy that has truly loved the game of basketball his entire career. Losing the handle and falling to the floor is nigh to finish that point when Kevin Durant was asked about Madison Booker. He says, well, she's got the potential to be better than I was. Whoa before it's all said and done. That's a big statement. Here in Texas, I mean, that is a huge statement. But understanding just her game and what she brings, I mean, when you look at her and you did a scouting report on Maddie Booker, for those who don't know or haven't been caught up yet, what does she bring to the floor that everyone seems to love? Tim, I think a little bit of everything. First of all, it's humility and grace that she has handled the spotlight with on an older team to step in and be the Big 12 Cold Player of the Year. And this is a kid that just, she sees the game at another level. She has great control over her body. She can knock down the three. The pull-up game is exceptional. She's a physical finisher. And she has been forced to compete on the defensive end under Vic Schaefer. We asked her why she chose Texas. It came down to Duke, Tennessee, and Texas. She said, Coach Vic knew me since the eighth grade back in Mississippi. I knew that he knew how to make me at my best. I wanted to go to a proven coach that can win. And that's exactly why she ends up in Austin. And a fantastic career is in front of her. Vic Schaefer took Mississippi State to two national championship games, and she also likes that number 35 and a player who used to wear for the Bulldogs, Victoria Vivians. Falls there on the defense of Weathers, kicks over to the corner for Barker. And airmailed that one. The ones you have to make, and Christy Curry knows it. It's probably 50-50 zone. Man defense so far, Alabama trying to find something to get Texas out of a rhythm. 
Holly too strong. Five grabbing down that rebound, and then it's fouled on pull down by nine. Here's the problem, Tiffany. Texas has missed, I believe, ten shots so far in this game. They've gotten seven of them back. Rebounding the offensive right now at a 70% rate. And I know it's difficult, but it's also difficult to win in advance of the Sweet 16. If you don't want to rebound, you don't want to win. And Alabama has got to tighten up when the ball's on the glass. They're out rebounding the Crimson Tide 14 to four. Half of those rebounds have come on the offensive glass. Hattie Five, the senior out of Senegal, born there, one of five siblings. and. Knocks down the free throws. So 21-14 advantage Texas. On the offensive end, what do you need to see from Alabama? Well, first of all, for Alabama, initiate your offense. You're being pushed out right now on your initial tech. Catch about the 30-foot mark. You've got to burn that pressure off with a ball screen or a back cut. And not continue to play offense outside the three. That's the attack that Christie Curry wants to see out of Loyal McQueen. She's got quickness, she's got maturity. She can get downhill and drive to the bucket. And for Vic Schaefer, you've got to eat up her left hand. I mean, if you can take it away three or four times per half, you might save your club six or eight points. The McQueen going to her left now, you're not gonna keep her away from the rim. The lefty who began her career at Georgia Tech is now averaging Close to 10 points after a few seasons in Tuscaloosa. Now she stepped into some big shoes as well, filling in the point guard spot. Graduation loss of Hannah Barber. They're looking inside. A couple of white jerseys on the backside is by, and that one blocked by Aaliyah Nye. So good defense from the Crimson Tide there. Last touch by the Longhorns. It's yeah. going to be Bama basketball. Bama came with a hard double team out of their zone. Texas trying to find that backside post play. The ball screen up top, get McQueen going downhill. McQueen again, this time five with the rejection. Now remember, yesterday or on uh, Friday, Christy Curry probably stole 10 or 12 points off baseline out of bounds under. But you get McQueen going downhill. If she goes right, she's gonna fight back to her left and a good job recovered to the basketball. We'll find nine. And Moore stays on her and commits the personal foul. Aaliyah Moore, that's her first personal foul. Team's second. The junior out of Moore, Oklahoma, who's coming off an excellent conference tournament performance. McQueen looking that left side again. Barker. Turns it over. Eight turnovers now for Alabama. Longhorns give the ball right back. Whistle for a three-second violation. Taylor Jones checking back into the ball game. Certainly a good sign as Aaliyah Moore goes to the bench. We saw Jones go down, hit her head, holding it for some time on the floor before going back to the locker room. So a positive sign for Vic Schaefer's crew. And if you're Alabama, you make Taylor Jones cover ball screens on every possession. That's one of her defensive weaknesses. You've got to know it. Nice by Nye. She's more of a three-point shooter than anything, but she's got game off the bounce. 32 in red is a hooper, and she, by herself, kind of carried Alabama to this second-round game when S.A. Barker was no factor. She's got five here tonight to lead Alabama scores. Losing the handle, trying to save it, Jones does. Amina Muhammad through some traffic. And Megan Noonan absorbs the contact. And a charge called, and the fans here in Moody don't care for it. Well, they don't care for it. It's the right call. Alabama is showing some grit and toughness. And you said as a defender before that 
Plant foot is on the ground, and Christy Curry says we're to continue to fight and hang on. Alabama's won 24 games this year with toughness, grit, and a lot of moxie. That's so far, that's how they've hung in this one. Winning his season in 32 years, and that one blocked by Jones. Oh, the block party is getting underway here in the last few possessions on the defensive end for Texas. Well, you've got to chase Weathers off the three-point line. If she beats you off the bounce, so be it. That is a finesse finish that will not work in this game against the size of Texas' front line. Booker tried to save it, last touch by the freshman. Tiffany, I coached against Vic Schaefer for three years. You can't take this baseline out of bounds for granted. The pressure is relentless. You've got to make a hard cut just to get yourself open, fight for your spot. They get it in tonight. Has some, oh. move, some move on the left side, that mid-range again. <laughs> Aliyah Nye showing she's got multiple ways to score. Don't just hang out with me at the three-point line. I'm going to bring it in a little closer, take it off the bounce. How tough was that for a right-handed player driving left? Too strong. Muhammad there on cleanup duty on the backside. Just not fighting hard enough, Alabama. When the shot is taken, they've got to get in front. They've got to move people back and become way more physical on the defensive glass. Three-point ball game favoring the host. Texas Shane Holly coming up with the block, but Carly Weathers, those are the winning plays. We talk about it, headsy plays that Christy Curry has talked about with Carly Weathers, the sophomore out of Loretto, Tennessee. Yeah, just the, the grit and toughness, 18 points against Florida State. We heard dad, David, a Major League Baseball pitcher for the World Series Yankees back in 96. And this is just alertness, wins the foot race to the ball and then quickly gets it up before the shot blocking link can affect her. Christy Curry, although they're down one, she's gotta be very confident they're on the home floor of a one seed, 9,000 people in the building. They've handled it so far. One point ball game with just under six minutes to go here in the first half. Moore asking for it, swings it over to the left side. Moore takes it off the bounce, leaves it short. Jones is there, rolls in. It just continues to be body blow after body blow by Texas on the offensive glass. 9-0 boards for Texas, nine second chance points for the Longhorns. And Maddie Booker, who started off this game hot, and now her teammates getting into it more, but she says, let me test the temperature right here. Well, it is hot. That pull-up game by her is it's almost almost indefensible. You think this crowd is behind these Texas Longhorn, the one seed? They love the plays that are made on the court. Well, this pull-up game by Madison Booker, rise, release, rotation, and result by 35 and one. Well, let's check out the leading scorers for today, the Honda Stories, and I'll tell you this, Madison Booker, five of six from the floor. She's got 10 points, Aaliyah Nye with nine. And Nye with the ball in her hands, 32 and crimson over the Carly Weathers, single digits now on the shot clock, looking for somewhere to go. Picks up her dribble at the free throw line, Deljane Williams, who checks in, wave off the basket as Moore is pumped up after being on the other end of that charge from Williams. Yeah, trying to burn that pressure off with a fast backdoor cut. That Texas defense reacting quickly to the ball. A bang, bang play, I'm sure. Christy Curry doesn't agree with it. Booker taking time, feeling the pressure up top. Some more ball pressure you see there from Alabama. Moore, eight points, five rebounds. Turns it over right there. I'm not sure where Moore, what she had in mind, because really the driving gap was closed off, drove without a purpose, costly turnover. Alabama just down five now. They've got to take advantage of it. 
Bounce pass to Parker, the size of 6'4", Taylor Jones made her kick it back out. There's Parker, look for three. Tip, you've got to make those. Those are called shrink threes. You made the defense shrink to the ball. You get open looks against Texas, you got to knock them down. Bama still within five as Texas has led the entire way so far. Jones misses, and Alabama gets it back. When you think about, they had some gritty wins throughout the season. Regular season win against Tennessee. They upset Louisville in the non-conference to close out the regular season. Christy Curry's crew got that win on the road in the regular season finale to secure the four seed and double bind the SEC tournament, find themselves here. And so, as you stated earlier, not intimidated by this environment or atmosphere as they've played in a lot of tough arenas over the years. Weathers behind the back and a foul whistled against Texas. That's gonna go against Maddie Booker. Tiffany, you don't wanna foul Weathers. The strength of her game is not beating you off the bounce, and you kind of bail her out right here by getting into her body. You stay in front of her. She's not a physical finisher. I had that one partially deflected. Barker on the take, too strong. Good defense by Shea Hall. It is not easy to stay in front of S.A. Barker when she gets to that right paw getting downhill. Defensively, 42% from the floor for this Texas team. A lot of success inside the mid-range. Rolls in for Booker. So soft. I mean, a big, powerful drive to the basket. But the pull-up finesse finish, that is special. Booker comes out to defend. Carly Weathers going to get that steal. Tries to come up with it, and the Longhorns do. That's why you're the Big 12 Player of the Year as a freshman. Has learned to compete on both ends of the floor over the last few months. Crowd loves it. Can they convert on the other end? Pops out for Jones. Your Alabama just settled down right now. Two minutes to go in the half. You've held your own. You're in this game against a one seed. No live ball turnovers. Well, Texas just making everything tough, but an even tougher shot there for S.A. Barker. You don't want to have a game full of we made hard guarded shots, but it sure does help when you got a kid that can make some, and Barker is that for Alabama. This Bama team, eight seed on the road, down a starter within five, under two minutes to go here from Austin. Winner advances to the Sweet 16. Weathers in the corner to Loyal McQueen. Try to get a little too fancy, turns it over. Booker calling the plays. Dozen points for the true freshman, six of eight from the floor. Moore taking it off. They're gonna call a blocking foul against Sarah Ashley Barker. Those are the type of defensive plays that Texas is really good at drawing these type of fouls. S.A. Barker, I, to me, she's moving her feet in legal guarding position. That's a really tough call to go against Alabama. Our experience officiating crew, Mike Forsberg, Eric Bruton, Kim Hobbs, and remember, foul trouble was an issue for Barker last game, only played 11 minutes, and now she'll have to go to the bench with two fouls. Booker. Time winding down on that shot clock. Casting with great position through two Crimson defenders. And a whistle. How about the high IQ play here by Madison Booker? No one's 
No one's open, just throws it off the backside of McQueen to make sure you get the ball in bounds. Madison Booker, he's accelerated three-time gold medalist for USA Basketball's under 16, under 17, and under 19 teams. That international experience, big reason why she does not play like a freshman. The NCAA Men's Basketball Championship second round continues tonight on CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV. For more information on tournament game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. Well, that international experience shows up in so many different ways for Maddie Booker. It was a concern for Christy Curry. A special and unique talent in Madison Booker, but the defense that we have seen come out of Shea Holly, she's had to guard the best player on the other side with Rory Harmon going down. She deflects, she steals, she blocks, she's all over the court and she's on the court for a long time. Tiffany, on-ball defense will win you games. Weak side defense will win you championships and Texas's weak side defense has been really good in this game for the most part. Tough shot by Nye, rolls out. And Vic Schaefer saw his sixth player of the year out of the Big 12 go to the floor in Gaston, but also doesn't like the fact that Bama retains possession here. Bills and Berger, Williams over to nine. And Nina Muhammad grabs that rebound. Be a big momentum basket right here for Texas if they close out the half with a make. Four seconds, Booker starts to make the move to the right side. Got to put something up and not able to get it up before the clock expired. Maybe, maybe the only mistake that Madison Booker has made this half just got too late into the play. Halftime here in Austin, 31-24 in favor of Texas. Time now for the halftime report. We'll send it into the studio. Offensive rebounds. They've gotten 56% of their misses on the offensive glass. Alabama has to fight when that ball's in the air. Baseline drive goes in. The reversal for Aaliyah Moore. Tiffany, she is just a hooper. She plays that four position. And... Vic Schaefer uses her as a mismatch four, just an old school hooper is more. Now you think back to Friday in that game against Florida State, it was Alabama who came out of the locker room and outscored the Knowles 23 to 11. They need another big quarter like that against Texas to remain in it. Booker, who had a dozen points, was six of eight from the floor, missing there. Taylor Jones fighting for that rebound, Booker. Off the carom and finding Shaley Gonzalez. Remember, Gonzalez also heated up against Drexel, had 18 of her 21 points in the second half. Booker looks at the shot clock, trying to get some separation mid range from the elbow. Yes. What do you do? What do you do? Isolation basketball, pretty good defense, better offense, and 35 and wide is hard to guard. What adjustments do you expect or anticipate here as this one's stolen away by Shaley Gonzalez on the break and all the way? The crowd erupts here in Moody Center. Alabama has to spend a timeout and quickly out the gate. Longhorns look sharp. Let's check out our most reliable team brought to you by Xfinity coming out of the locker room. Six straight points for Texas. Tiffany, Texas has been dominant all year offensively. They average 112 points per 100 possessions. It's multiple ways to beat you. It's not just the pull-up game, which is phenomenal by Madison Booker, but the post play inside. They run with a high IQ. They got guards that can get out and finish. They knock down the three ball, not heavily relying on it. And Kevin Durant has to be very impressed with this Texas offense and great appreciation for that high release of Madison Booker, something that Kevin Durant really perfected at his time here under Texas is Rick Barnes. He was mean in the mid-range, four-time scoring champion in the NBA. Interesting, Texas men were knocked out of the NCAA last night by Rick Barnes, who's now yeah. at Tennessee in an absolute slugfest of a game. 
The good support, though, of Rodney Terry, the Texas men's basketball coach in attendance here. Meanwhile, Aliyah Moore has to go back to the locker room. So Texas is playing with four players on the court right now as Vic Schaefer has to call a timeout. Said you didn't see Aliyah Moore yeah. just walk off the court. He should not have to call a timeout. The officials completely miss as a five on four with Moore going right to the exit, holding her head. Frustrating moment right now for Vic Schaefer. Monday night on ESPN, the NCAA Women's Championship second round continues with Syracuse squaring off against UConn. That should be a fun one, followed by West Virginia, Iowa, and Caitlin Clark. Then it's Kansas and USC. How about the Asia Fair going off for 32 points in that win over Arizona to advance? Paige Beckers, Ashlyn Shane had a career high in their win. And then, of course, we know so much about one of the brightest stars in all of college basketball and Caitlin Clark, 29 points away from breaking Kelsey Plum's record of most points in the season. Yeah, those kids that we know that are in their last NCAA tournament like Caitlin Clark, Rakia Jackson, Cameron Brink, they will be very difficult to knock out of this women's championship. There's something about your last time through. And this is not Madison Booker's last time through, I can tell you that. Well, Leah Moore, who went to the locker room, she's back on the bench, said, look, we are happy that we're going to have three more years of Madison Booker here in Austin. The Longhorns currently on a 16-2 run going back to that first half. What's the answer going to be for Alabama on the offensive end? they got to find the drivability and get to the free throw line in this game if they have any chance. And Lord. Texas has defended really well without fouling. There you go. Wide open look on the wing for Loyal McQueen. Knocks down the triple. And Alabama get back-to-back -back stops and back-to-back -back makes. Their issue continues to be, can they clean up after the first shot is taken? Holly, backdoor cut, baseline in. Tiffany, she is such an explosive athlete. I mean, just her burst to get to full speed in one step is impressive. And since Cody, who played just six minutes coming off of that career performance, double-double, 20 points, 14 rebounds against Florida State. They need to get her going. She had to battle some foul trouble. Aliyah Nye, though, is up to pick up the slack, leaves it short. And Sarah Ashley Barker was hoping for a foul as Taylor Jones again wreaking havoc underneath. Timmy, watch this cut by Shea Holly. I mean, this kid was a post player in high school, number 10 in white, and has developed into a really fast athletic three. Speaking of three in crimson, Sarah Ashley Barker with the tip to the hoop and the horn. There's to my point, you've got to get downhill if you're Alabama, force the officials into this game. Score through contact, stop the game, and score from that free throw line. S.A. Barker, one of the better drivers out of the SEC this year, has the ability to draw contact and finish. And a good job of the post presence by Essence Cody to kind of free up that right side just a little bit. First team all SEC finished fifth in scoring in the conference. Her career year scoring up plus 11 from last year. Remember, Brittany Davis was the big time scorer who graduated for the Crimson Tide. Christy Curry extending her defense right now. Going to be trying to turn up the heat a little bit herself, be an aggressive defensive club. These two coaches squared off back when Vic Schaefer was in the SEC at Mississippi State. A traveling violation called against Madison Booker. I love what Christy Curry has done. She's going to turn up the pressure herself and talk about shocking the ball off of a ball screen. Watch Alabama. Impacted right here. The ball screen is set. Shock it right there. Man, good job by Barker and Nye to get after it and force the turnover. Loses it. It's a jump ball. And possession arrow is going to stay with Alabama. Good sportsmanship shown there as they wipe things off. Christy Curry. Talked about the success that she's had at Alabama. And her team, gritty, gratitude, love. That's what they are powered by. 
Will McQueen crossing over. Gonzalez stolen away by Shaley. Slim Shaley. Back the other way, and Barker gets a hand on it. Boy, the full gap held by Texas defense. The ball pressure is relentless. But then those hot hands come in play right there. The swipe down by Holly Gonzalez comes up with a swipe. Shea Holly on the inbound. He's off the mark. Alabama's got to go right now. Screw off your run game. Barker leaves it short. Is that the shot you want if you're Christy Curry? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the the half-court offense is too tough to come by. Alabama's at their best, getting that thing down the floor with their run game scoring. Just another missed shot by Barker. Carly Weathers pulls in the rebound. Like, again, Alabama, your speed is your advantage in this game. Capitalize on it. They're used to knocking down about seven threes a game. Barker, though, going inside. Great jump and five, but even better defense. Jones with a fifth block of the game. Just not a strong finish by Essence Cody. As good as she's been as an SEC true post player with all those starts, this game's gone to another level on her. Shea Holly trying to go along that right side, high off the glass, but there's Jones. And that length of Taylor Jones, all of 6'5 with a long wingspan. But this finish by Cody right now, it's got to be strong, at least get contact. Open up your shoulders a little bit and don't explode into the, into the chest of the defender. You're just asking for it to get blocked. And, a real learning curve right now for 21 in red, who has been fantastic, by the way, as a true freshman with all those starts in the SEC going up against older players. Well, she started every game throughout the year. It was a noticeable improvement. You're thrown into the fire like that. She's responded. Meanwhile, the defense we've seen from Texas, that's what we know they can bring to the table, but they doubled their blocks this game, averaging about four a game. They've got eight tonight. And Cody keeps it high, and she's fouled. Now, the goal for Texas and Vic Schaefer was to keep Alabama in the 60s. And they are certainly on track to do that right now. And Alabama, when they, when they lose, they have struggled to score. I believe eight out of their losses this year have been when they've been held in the 60s or less. And that's a type of defense that Vic Schaefer time and time again has thrown at people. Four times in the Sweet 16, three times to the Elite Eight for Vic Schaefer, a couple of Final Four appearances, national runners up, and it's all built on the DNA of the toughness defensively. He was making young ladies run the steps yesterday for a missed box out. The day of practice between your first round and second round game. But that's... That's the, who he is. That's who he is. He's always been, and the players have responded to it, that disruptive and physical defense, keeping the pressure as S.A. Barker trying to pressure the basketball into the hands of Moore. And Moore picks up her dribble, got to get moving quickly. Not a lot of time to work with. Moore launches a three. the crowd just momentarily after that take to the hoop from Sarah Ashley Barker, but Aaliyah Moore just her fourth made three of the season. She's so efficient around the rim, 54% from the floor. And I love the response inside the Moody Center from Longhorn fans. Cody coming up with that defensive board. Yeah, Taylor Jones is going to come out. Vic, Vic Schaefer, he knows that Texas is the legitimate Final Four contender. They have to make their layups around the rim. Williams, the take to the hoop. You see coming on the backside with Sarah Ashley Barker. She came soaring in to try to get to that one. Yeah, I thought Taylor Jones was going to come out. Vic Schaefer, and as good as Taylor Jones has been, is going to hold her to a high, high level going forward. 
And you're 6'4", you got to make those uncontested ones right around the bucket. Eight of 18 on layups. Yeah. Right there for Texas, so an area they'll look to improve upon. That's just not a good enough percentage if you're trying to win the whole thing. Again, many counted them out after Rory Harmon went down with that torn ACL. She cheers on from the bench and has been an integral part of this Texas Longhorns 31 win season as a vocal leader. And some hard falls for Sarah Ashley Barker. She is still down on the baseline, but giving it her all. And that's what you get from Sarah Ashley Barker, the senior out of Birmingham, Alabama. So tough, so strong. She brings an edge to this team. Yeah, no doubt. Her dad, Jay, a quarterback at Alabama, won a national title under Gene Stallings back in 90, 1992. But this is a fierce bulldog of a competitor. And if Alabama is going to fight their way back in this game, when they get a stop, they've got to come with a vengeance. Attack that rim, stop the game, score from the free throw strike. And Christy Curry, and she has won a ton of games, and she knows exactly the formula for Bama to get back in this thing, but you've got to capitalize from that free throw line. So far tonight, Alabama. Five of six from the line, and you see the improvement from round one to round two now. 12 points for Sarah Ashley Barker. And the defensive pressure by Alabama cranked right back up. If you lose, you lose playing on your toes, not your heels in the second round. Two minutes to go in the third quarter. Jimmy Dykes, Tiffany Green, the winner of this one will move on to the Sweet 16, a 10-point advantage for the Texas Longhorns, the one seed. And Maddie Booker was fouled on the jump shot. Sarah Ashley Barker picks up her third personal foul. Maddie Booker wants to take this team as deep as she can as the winner will advance to play either Gonzaga or Utah. And the Sweet 16 starts next Friday. Zags with 31 and three on the year. They can really shoot that three ball on their home court, which was magnificent watching it. Those Gonzaga folks, man, they love their hoops in that part of the country. No doubt. Zags head coach Lisa Fortier saw a 25-point performance from Yvonne Ejim. Utah has Alyssa Pilly, so it should be a fun matchup as inside Cody can't get it to fall. Shea Holly running down that rebound. Well, had a chance to cut the single digits. Gaston gets her own rebound and puts it back in. Yeah, but it's on the second one. I know, I know Texas right now. Things are rolling for them, but you're talking big picture. You cannot continue to miss your first shots around the rim at the rate they do. I'm not saying something that Vic Schaefer doesn't tell his own kids. Nine for three. What an answer, man. She can, she can really spin it. I mean, 250 of her 390 field goal attempts on the year from that three-point line at 42%. Outstanding three-point shooter, had 18 points in that opening round. Game played all 40 minutes. She hasn't stepped off the court tonight. Again, shortened bench because of Jessica Timmons, one of those players out, Naomi Jones, who was out earlier this season, one of the post players for Christy Curry. And so she's got a short rotation here. 10-point ball game, can cut it to single digits on this possession. Get downhill, right? Indeed, Carly Weathers decides to do so and miss at the rim. Well, that's a big miss. You could have cut the single digits. It feels like Texas should be up 18 or 20. It's a 10-point game. Off the mark there, Sarah Ashley Barker brings it back the other way. She can heave it up at half court, and it's off the mark. Tour pace there in the third quarter as Alabama staying within striking distance. Texas 
10 minutes away from advancing to their third Sweet 16 in the last four years, but still, lot to go. The future is bright, and you want to know why all eyes are on this game. These are among the stars, the budding stars that we will follow throughout their careers. Yeah, no doubt, the next generation of stars. And I was really blown away yesterday watching Juju Watkins. I think she's got 13 30-point games on the year. And Juju Watkins could still be a senior in high school. She's 18 years old, doesn't turn 19 till July. What a special talent. And that LSU squad, they are must-watch TV. They've had, they've had more drama than a sorority during rush week. At some point, is he going to catch up with them, or is he going to fuel them to another national title? Well, the defending champs held on against MTSU, and you think about how South Carolina had that dominating win behind 20 points off the bench from Malaysia Full Wiley over North Carolina. Tiffany, it's an eight-point game, and a chance to be six. On the break here is Williams blocked by Moore. If you're Alabama, you have to do what you just did. Again, the one advantage you have in this game is your speed. If your guards can get out, you've got to try to finish. And Moore is just, I described, she's just a hooper. I mean, you can play her as a mismatch four. Defensively, she can switch out and Pretty much cover one through four and a big time open floor defensive play by Moore. And they missed her in last year's tournament. Nine games in the season for ACL. Missed the rest of the way. And you see the difference maker that she can be when 23 and White is on the floor. Amo, as they like to call her, was fouled and she'll have a couple of free throws upcoming. <laughs> I love the story that was told of Aaliyah Moore had that great Big 12 tournament, but was very nervous going into the title game. The night before, she was throwing up. She didn't attend shoot around, had to get an IV before then, and then bust out with 14 points and six rebounds in that win over Iowa State to claim the Big 12 tournament championship. She simply makes Texas better is the best way to describe her game. And She's the rah-rah emotional leader of this Longhorns team. Changes the mood of the practice facility. I love how the coaches described her to me. And every coach knows when I'm talking about the value of a kid like that that just brings it every single day and rises others up around her. She has that lead rise back up to 10 for Texas. Sarah Ashley Barker working on the freshman Booker. Here's Carly Weathers, who had an outstanding game round one. Aliyah Nye puts this one up for three. How about Texas? They can pressure the ball and stay attached, denying you the next pass away, forcing you to make plays off the bounce. If you can't do it, you're in a world of hurt. Texas is shooting 39% from the floor, but needing to knock down close ones like that, all being contested. Oh. And Sarah Ashley Bunker runs up into the stands trying to save that one. And missed opportunity there in transition. Alabama has had more turnovers than assists on the year. The turnovers numbers starting to grow right now in this game for Bama. You want to run, but you want to run with a high IQ. 14 turnovers for Roll Tide so far in this game, only seven assists. Valuing and taking care of the basketball. That's something you hear coaches say all the time. That was of great importance to Christy Curry when she talked to her team yesterday. Moore. And Nye back the other way for Alabama. Bama's getting stopped. They cannot continue to have empty possessions on this end. And there's another one. 37 rebounds for Texas, winning the rebound battle, plus 12. It's going to be a foul on the floor. It's going to go against Essence Cody. The true freshman now picks up her fourth personal foul. So in her first NCAA tournament, had a beautiful start to it in the debut. And here, a little bit more challenge here 
against the number one seed, Texas Longhorns, who have the lead with 7.38 remaining in the fourth. Let's take a look at our Capital One rewarding performance with KD in the house and some similarities with Book on the Court. Well, the one thing I've seen is the high release of Kevin Durant right there. It's been a staple throughout his career. He can't get to his ball in the jump shot. You know what? I see the same thing from, from Madison Booker as a true freshman. Her release point in the women's game for a 6-1 guard, you're not going to get to that shot. I mean, she's got a lot of pop into it. She gets that thing high with a smooth release and a flick of the wrist. I love the fact that Kevin Durant, on a day off from the NBA grind, has a day off in between games at San Antonio, makes a 90-mile drive, showing respect and love, not only for Texas, but for Madison Booker as well. Well, the capital city of Texas was once home to Kevin Durant. He loves it here, and certainly he's got to love what he's seen thus far from Texas with this 10-point lead. Booker coming up with that rebound, saying, hey, let's reset. 20 seconds, put back on the shot clock, and it's counting down. Shaley Gonzalez after her 21-point game, just two points here. Tonight, inside the Gasson, who's got great position on the undersized. Yes. That is a set play coming out of timeout by Vic Schaefer. It took a while to get there, a little bit of a delay. But against that zone, you reverse the ball, and ball reversal for Texas is their friend. Why? Because it allows those post players, as the ball is being reversed, to just blow up the hip of those inside defenders. And Kevin Durant knows good basketball when he sees it, no doubt. Deanna Gaston, the senior out of Maryland, Texas, Big 12, sixth player of the year. And her presence on the floor makes a difference. Team up now by 13, extending it out. And what's gonna be the answer for Alabama? Who's going to fulfill that role? Great look inside the court. And another rejection by Moore. It has been a really tough evening for Essence Cody. She'll learn from it. Ten blocks tonight for this Texas team who's averaging four a game. Taylor Jones started off the party. Aaliyah Moore has kept it going. Shea Holly in the corner for three. There's Moore again. Tiffy just too much strength. That is the 16th, 1-6 offensive rebound for the Longhorns in this game. My, 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 did you see that? <laughs> oh, that front line of Texas, pure domination in Austin. Find themselves just over six minutes away from the Sweet 16. Now that has been the entire game, the 16th offensive rebound. And on the other end, the block shot ability of Gaston and Jones, multiple kids with a lot of length, hard to handle. Parker, not afraid, still going right back to the hoop this time. She's successful. And Sarah Ashley Parker, who leads all Alabama scorers with 14 points tonight. They've got to get a stop on this end to try to cut into this lead. Yeah, Texas only averages four three-point makes per game. We're seeing what they are offensively, and they are a power inside the three-point line team on the offensive end. Booker tried to pick the pocket. McQueen comes back out. Back into the hands of S.A. Downhill kick out. Weathers finds Barker. Three! Got it! Well done by the exit cut of S.A. Barker. She drives the lane, makes the pass, doesn't stand and watch, immediately makes a scoring cut to that offside three position. And Alabama hanging in there with just over five to go. And we've talked about it all game long. If you're just tuning in, so much has gone Texas's way just like this. Yeah. And yet, Alabama is still within striking distance. They are. Vic Schaefer, though, keeping the ball in the middle third of the floor, trusting his bigs to find each other. Or Gaston is a really good backup post player. Sixth man of the year in the Big 12. Booker back Whoa. the other way behind the back. The try to avoid nine. She decides to take it all the way. <laughs> Her teammates love.
I've heard talking about Manny Booker. It's not about me, but when it has to be about me, you talk about a kid that can take over. That's a 6-1 point guard recruited as a small forward, forced to learn the position on the fly with only three days' notice before they start Big 12 play. What does she do? She becomes the Big 12 player of the year, the first freshman ever, and has ignited this Texas Longhorn and Moody Center and just 439 away from advancing to the Sweet 16. 9,753 <laughs> in attendance here tonight. This crowd invigorated. They were ready to see their Longhorns put on a show. And one of the stars, Maddie Booker, is delivering. You know, fatigue and conditioning was a question mark early when she took over that point guard spot because of all the mental things that are thrown at you as that lead guard, but she has continued to grow in her conditioning and her decision-making now to close out games. And Vic Schaefer grabbed a McDonald's All-American out of Germantown High School in Ridgeville, Mississippi. And a one seed now being led by a youngster. Out of timeout, a nice step back jumper. And it rolls in. Aaliyah Morris showing off the handles and takes it all the way in. I don't know how many times she's been on the floor tonight. She's trying to get her balance, but she is giving maximum effort. 19 points for Moore. Bama airmails it on the other end. Poked away by Booker. Parker has it. Cody with a nice move. Up and through. Yeah, good job to fake middle and come back. Finish on the left side. Again, we knew the eight seeds against the one seed in this tournament. Tiffany, they are 2-56 and 56 overall. Ole Miss is actually able to do it last year against Stanford, but Alabama, you've got to play your absolute best on this floor. They have not done it. They've had turnovers. A big collision right there. Nye trying to blow up that dribble handoff. And 9,700 plus fans letting the officials know how they feel about it. If Bama has any chance in this game, this is a must-score possession. McQueen got it. Well, they did. They closed it to 10. Keep your defensive pressure up if you're Alabama right now. Making that inbound pass difficult to Booker, but that's where Alabama gets as close as about 10 in this second half, but can't shrink it any further. The ball should go inside. It has all evening long for Texas when the game's had pressure on him. There it is. Amina Mohammed misses right there. It is alarming to me how many times Texas will miss at the rim. Can cut it to single digits and Slice this lead down some more. And say Parker on the other wing. Someone's got to come get it. Timeout taken by Aaliyah Nye because Shay Holly was all up in it. Tiffany, that's the yeah, and that's their last one, right? For Alabama. You have to burn one because you couldn't burn off the pressure. You've got to fight. If you can't get yourself open, open against Alabama, I mean against Texas pressure, you're in trouble. And that time, Christy had to use her last time out to save the possession. Now short clock, only 12 to work with. Well, for the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. The road to Cleveland becoming clearer after tomorrow. This round of 32 will whittle it down to 16 going to next weekend. Meanwhile, Christy Curry knows that she's got a big fan watching at home. And that's another member of the family and Oliver Curry. Yeah, there's, the dog, yeah. As we, as we have a pause in the action, 
and give Oliver Curry some love. I mean, every head coach knows after a win or a loss, there's nothing better than walk in your home and have a dog come up to you. And Oliver's been back watching back in Tuscaloosa. And it's on Instagram, the Oliver Curry has a pretty good following. And Kelly Curry and Christy Curry, a great husband-wife combination. And Kelly said, when we got a dog, it had to be a boy dog. I'm surrounded with daughters and a wife and, <laughs> and, and women my entire working career. And Ollie walked him back home. And either way this thing goes, that's something about a dog to welcome you as a head coach. I've been there many times. Now the pressure again. They have missed 15, 15 shots at the rim. It has plagued them all year. Normally what plagues you in the regular season will cost you in postseason at some point. Too strong from Barker. Another opportunity and a foul underneath the basket going against Texas. Well, that is something if Texas is able to hold on for these final two minutes and 15 seconds that you know Vic Schaefer is gonna to point to and talk about for all the areas where they have done well tonight. I feel some drills potentially coming on. Barker sees it roll around. Moore collects the rebound. She's closing in on a double-double, 19 points, nine rebounds. What a night for Aaliyah Moore. We'll look at Maddie Booker as a true freshman. Vic Schaefer going to trust her handle. Leaves that one short. Double-double there. Thanks to Aaliyah Moore's offensive rebound and putback. Ties a career high in points now with 21. I'm telling you, she's an old-school hooper. Is more just makes plays. Not the kind of kid you you actually run plays for. You just trust her instincts, her heart, her big Valentine to make plays. A 10-point game. The thing was not decided. The miss and look at more. Just a nose for the ball. Long wingspan can get rebounds out of her area. Big time performance. Trying to advance Texas to the Sweet 16 by more. She's been a part of the Elite Eight run here with Oklahoma back with Texas correction there in 2022. And this group is itching to get back to the Sweet 16, Gonzaga or Utah will be the opponent or the winner of this one. And we're coming up after our game, Baylor, Virginia Tech. And another team out of the Big 12 as Nikki Cullen leading the way for the Baylor Bears. Meanwhile, Kenny Brooks saw the career of Elizabeth Kitley come to an end with a knee injury, but Georgia Amor and the job that she's done, the way that she has stepped up for the Hokies all season long, close to 19 points a game, and she's responsible for about 40 plus percent of their offers. Well, that's a big load though, because you lose Elizabeth Kitley, the three-time ACC Player of the Year. And I, I think Baylor is gonna win that game. I, Baylor's a very athletic, driving team. Talking to this Texas staff who knows Baylor really well. Baylor can go four round one, they can go five out. And I think that's a really tough cover for Virginia Tech coming up next. And Vic Schaefer are going to get his kids to the Sweet 16. They have not been perfect, but the value of a one seed in this tournament, again, 31 of the 41 national titles have been won by a one seed. That one poked away by Moore. Tiffany, it feels like if everyone is chasing though yeah. South Carolina, as dominant as they were against North Carolina today. South Carolina now 34 and 0. And Don Staley, they have not lost a regular season game since all the way back in December of 2021, trying to become the 10th undefeated national champion in the women's game. Texas did it back in 86 at 34 and 0. South Carolina chasing perfection, and they just might do it. 10th straight Sweet 16, the combination of all those great players. Final minute here in Moody Center, and another great crowd for 
The second round game here from Austin. Hooker being bothered on the perimeter. Loses the hand on a shot clock violation. You speak to this eight seed Alabama team and the job that Christy Curry has done back to back 20 win seasons, winning this season in 32 years. They were trying to do something special, came up short. But kudos to this group. Yeah, their who third. Fought to the end. Yeah, the third NCAA in the past four years, right? For Alabama. Oh. And the SEC put eight teams in this NCAA tournament, tied with the ACC with eight teams. And you're getting ready to add Texas and Oklahoma. You're looking at an SEC going forward in the women's game that could consistently put nine, ten teams in that women's championship. Alabama just didn't have the front line to hold up in this game today. And Texas is going to advance. They took advantage of their number one seed. They filled the building to 9,700. And they've got an absolute star in Madison Booker, the next generation of greats, holding that ball right now to close this thing out. Well done by the Texas Longhorns. And the Texas Longhorns will go dancing back to the Sweet 16 for the third time in the last four years. Madison Booker, Shea Holly. Shaylee Gonzalez played all 40 minutes of this one. A gritty effort, first NCAA tournament appearance for this superstar. 18th overall Sweet 16 appearance for the Texas Longhorns.